Hey there folks, how's it going? Back with uh, more of this uh, basic computer games edited by uh, David All. This is the TRS-80 edition. I have the older one also, um, but uh, the older one is over there. But like the, the games that I have right now, the ones that are online already are, are the later ones from this book. Most of them are the same. There's a couple that are missing, so I'll go back and get those later. But for now, going through this, we had a real, real long, real good fun playing a hockey game last week. For those who were here, a lot of the regulars on the stream were, were involved in the hockey game. Um, some against their will, some of them, I don't know, but it was really uh, fun, actually. Um, actually, one second. Let me just gonna close the door back here so it's a little bit quieter. Just give me one sec. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, while we'll wait for people to join, maybe I'll do something else. Uh, I got a package in the mail. I never do like unboxings on my channel, like where I actually open like a cardboard box and someone got me. If I would do that stuff like that on the channel, I would I could probably make a video with like a hundred <laughs> boxes at one time, it's like like all these other YouTubers do, because I get a lot of stuff in the mail. But since actually I'm waiting for see if people to join, let's open this up. I'll open my box up in the meantime. Let's see what's in here. I already know what it is because eBay sent you messages saying something was delivered. But this is a really cool game. Oh, I opened the damn box. There we go. I'm not showing you the front. Oh, I'm trying to show you the front because it has my address on it. But um, this is the box. Yeah, what's in the box? What's in the box? Really exciting. Hey, Mark, how's it going? How you doing, man? You were in the hockey game. Did you, did you see that? And what is it here? What could this be? Can you guys see through the tape? I can. It's an awesome game. I've never owned before. I did play it many times. Do a little mini unboxing. We'll wait people to join. Scott, how's it going? <laughs> he seems to have himself. And the game is Kickman. How many of you guys have played this game? It's an awesome game. Um, it came out in the, in the arcades. It was called Kick. And then they made a kick man for the Commodore 64. And uh, basically, you're this clown dude riding a unicycle, and uh, you got to get balloons and Pac Man that fly around. It's basically, this is actually a pretty accurate uh, description of the game. But uh, the reason I never got it before is because it comes on a cartridge. It was only released for Commodore 64 at home and only on a cart. And. Um, this is one of the few types of things I don't have a way right now to play on my computer. There's no there's no good Commodore 64 card dumper that exists. So I'm, I'm going to have to create one myself, I guess, or, you know, copy someone else's. Or what, as far as I can't buy one, but I'm on a mission now, now that i got Kickman, because I want to play this game. Obviously, I can download a ROM, but what kind of fun is that? So anyway, just uh, get started with here with, with uh, you know, showing this box, and I intend to play this on a stream at some point soon. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Ryan says, freeze, MFO, <laughs> freeze mofos, stu, stu, man, eBay police. What's the, what, what, what did I do? What, what's, what's the eBay police getting me for? Um, <laughs> I know, kick, man. Yeah, Mark, we saw you're not streaming this week, but I see something for next week. So anyway, back to uh, basic computer games. Actually, where's my light? My light's not on. There we go. All right. Now, sorry about that. I've got to turn this light on. I plugged it in, but it's not on. Basic computer games, TRS-80 edition. Last week we finished with hockey, and so the next game I think is, what is it? Oh, horse race. We need to do this one, horse race. Let's try horse race. Sweet basic. <laughs> yep, this is sweet, sweet basic. All right, so vint base horse race dot bass. Horse Race. Welcome to South... It's funny, a lot of these games apparently were made in, in like, um, like the West Coast, Oregon, or I, I think because Creative Computing was in say, was in California, but I'm not sure. Welcome to South Portland High Racetrack, owned by Laurie Chevalier, uh, who apparently was a student at South Portland High School, according to the book, at the time that this was written. Do you want directions? Yes. Let me put caps lock on. Yes. Up to 10 may play. A table of odds will be printed. You may bet any 
positive amount under a hundred thousand dollars on one horse during the re let me make this bigger i'm sorry i gotta make this bigger i forgot last time i did that uh how do i make it bigger let me make this bigger so you guys can read it uh let me make this window smaller wait wait i like that come on there all right, now hopefully it should be a little easier to read because I don't think that uses the whole line. So why should I make it difficult for you guys to read it? All right, how how many you want to bet? All right, sorry, you may bet any positive amount of hundred thousand dollars on one horse during the race. A horse will be shown by its number. The horses race down the paper. So this is probably meant for a teletype machine where there's no screen. <laughs> the horses race down the paper. How many want to bet? So who got who here wants to play? Got a few people on the chat. What's going on here? Mark, you got the... Oh, you got the vaccine. Oh, sorry. Sorry, but you're not feeling well. Which which one did you get? Moderna or uh, Pfizer? I got Moderna. And luckily, I, I escaped mostly side effect free. All right. Two people are in. Scott is busy eating, ordering a pizza or eating a pizza. So, all right. Well, we're we'll, we'll give... We'll, I'll give you 10 more seconds to see if anybody else says they're in. And then we're going to start. Um, <laughs> it provides you to develop mutant powers the next three to five days. I doubt mutant powers. Moderna here, Vax over two, whip my boy. Sorry to hear that. I had like a swollen arm for number one. And number two, I mean, I took a nap. I, I think I took a nap, but that was about it. All right, so we're playing three players. When question our peers, type name. So we got Stu. We got Ryan. And we got Mark. And Mark, did you play the hockey game? You were like, you are big time in the hockey game. <laughs> All right, horse. Joe Moore. 5.111. What kind of odds are these? To 1. LBJ, 46 to 1. Mr. Washburn, 9.2 to 1. Miss Karen, 23 to 1. Jolly, you get 5 point whatever. Horse. Horse. What kind of name is that? Jelly Do Not. Or I guess Jelly Donut. And Midnight. Uh, place your bets. Horse number, then amount. I'll bet on Miss Karen. Uh, she sounds good. It's 23 to 1 odds. I'm sure I'll lose. 4. And then pick a space? Is that how you do it? I, I don't know. 4,000. I guess not. 1,000. Ryan. Ryan and Mark, what are your bets? Oh, Mark, you got to go back and watch the last stream. Um, towards the end, like we played a hockey game that was freaking awesome, and you were in it. <laughs> I think you were the goalie. You kept getting injured, if I remember correctly. But maybe that's why, maybe that's why the Moderno hit, knock, knocked you out. So, uh, Mark and Ryan, 300 on Joe Moore. Uh, well, wait, I need to Ryan's for that first. Three hundred on Joe Moore. Yeah, you're in it. You're in it, damn it. I'm telling you, you're in it. You got to go watch it. You were definitely in it. <laughs> Rob Bob was not in it, though. Where's my soda? Here we go. Ryan says $300 on Jelly Donut. The seven. And 300. And Mark. I think this is actually Coke that exploded. Um, I think it's what left leftover Diet Coke. I think. I don't remember. I bought like four Pepsis yesterday, though. Uh, no, no, it's a Pepsi that exploded. It was a Pepsi that exploded that I poured into a Coke bottle because because the bottle exploded for the Pepsi. Um, so it is Pepsi, actually. Uh, and Mark, sorry. R Mark said 300 on Joe Moore. So that's uh, number one, 300. Whoa, it's going so fast. All right, we, <laughs> let's scroll up to see what happened. Uh, I guess it's supposed to, it thinks it's printing on a piece of paper, like I said. So, so four, okay, gosh. Start, I guess, it's okay, so it started like that. And I can't even tell what's going on here because there's no names. So which one do we bet on? So I bet it on number four. Ryan was number seven. And Mark was number one. So the first screenshot, you don't know. Four is like sort of close. Seven and one is there back there. And in the next screenshot here, four, seven, and one are actually all in the front. So we're doing pretty well, but eight is winning. And then four, seven, and one are neck and neck with eight, but number three is actually winning. And then four is in the lead. With number three and then eight. Three is now winning, it looks like. 
at the very end, the race results are number three, first place at 9.2 to 1. Number four, yeah, at 23 to 1. <laughs> number five, then 5 to 1. Fourth place, number one. Who was number seven? Do you want, that's it? I mean, it doesn't even say, like, like you won money or something? Do you want to bet the next race? Yes or no? That sucks. No. That's it? All right, well, that, hey, Jeremy, how's it going? That game sucked. I mean, like, the, 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 they should have added much more to the display, but we, I still won, so that's the important thing, right? I won, and you guys lost, and, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> this game blows, Ryan says. Mark just has a sad face. But, like I said, I, I still won the game. So even though the game sucked, there still was a little bit of pleasure for me because I because I beat you two guys. All right, let's see what the next game is. The hockey game was much so far by far the best game. Next one is called Hercule. I know this game is going to be stupid, but we'll just do it quickly. It's, it's, a, it's like sort of a very basic, no pun intended, game. Hercule. Okay, a Hercule is hiding on a 10 by 10 grid. A Hercule is some kind of monster. Oh, it says here, A Hercule is a happy beast that lives in another galaxy on a planet named Lurt that has three moons. Her Hercule are favorite pelts of the Gwik, the dominant race of Lurt. And to find out more, read The Hercule is a Happy Beast, a story in the book A Way Home by Theodore Sturgeon. He was a famous science fiction writer, so okay. A Hercule is hiding on a 10 by 10 grid. Home base of the grid is point zero comma zero in the southwest corner. At any point of the grid is designated by a pair of whole numbers separated by a comma. The first number is the horizontal position. The second number is the vertical position. You must guess the Hercules grid point. You get five tries. This is like a stupid like guessing game, basically. Um, so I'll guess five comma five. So zero comma zero is southwest. Go southeast. Okay, so that means I can go that way. Um, so I want to go, let's say, seven comma three go southwest okay so now what I'll go let's say wait southwest so six comma two just, just comma one go south so six comma zero you found them in four guesses! Woohoo! Let's play again. No, let's not play again. Like I said, that game was pretty basic, like I said. What are you guys saying here? Um, Rob Bob is here too, but he has enormous headphones on. He's playing a game for this plenty of the nerve. That's funny. Uh, and Jeremy said, My phone was messing up and not allowing me to enter live chat. Mark says, I had this really cool Atari 8 bit basic game called Gambler. I had a game a long time ago, a horse race game. I don't remember what it was called, but it had, showed like horses running across the screen. I remember that. I mean, like, I think it was with the TRS 80, the one that I had. It's probably on Sea Load Magazine, and we'll find it at some point. All right. Kinema. Kinema is the next one. Kinema. So this says, this, to this is not probably not really such a great game either. This program tests your fundamental knowledge of kinematics. It presents a simple problem. I'm reading from the book. It presents a simple problem. A ball is thrown straight up in the air at some random velocity. You must answer three questions about the fly of the ball. How high will it go? How long until it returns to Earth? What will its velocity be in, after a random number of seconds? So this is like Scott's favorite type of game, basically. A ball is thrown upwards at 15 meters per second. How high will it go? Who cares? Number expected. Retry input line. I don't know. It, I have no idea. Uh, let's say... Uh, 30. Yeah, right. It's like freaking physics problems. 30. Not even close. Correct answer is 12.8. How long until it returns in seconds? 1. Not even close. Correct answer is 3.2. What was the velocity of 2.3 seconds? F you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, zero. Not even close. Correct answer is negative 11. All right, well, you know, go. you can blow me. I don't, I don't care about this game. It's stupid. All right, next. King. Okay, this it says here, this is like the mo one of the most comprehensive, difficult, and interesting land and resource management games. If you've never played one of these games, start with Hammurabi. So it's something like Hammurabi. So my tolerance for this might be low. Again, I did a review of Hammurabi a long time ago, which I watched, again, over the weekend because I was interested in what, how bad it was. It's pretty. It's not great, but <laughs> it's okay. I do instructions. 
Congratulations, you've just been elected premier of Setats Dinitu, I guess the United States, a small communist island 30 by 70 miles long. Um, yeah, uh, by the way, Mark, I did remember that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. It did not help me solve those problems. Just <laughs> um, your job is to decide the country's budget and distribute money to the country over the communal treasury. The money system is RALODs, I guess dollars spelled backwards. Each person needs 100 RALODs per year to survive. Your country's income comes from farm produce and tourists visiting your magnificent forests, hunting, fishing, etc. Half your land is farmland. Which also has, <laughs> Mark said, I always do stew as a commie. Which always has, uh, an ex was also an excellent mineral content and maybe sold to foreign industry, strip mining, who imported support their own workers. Crops costing 10 and 15 rallods per square mile to plant. Your goal is to complete your eight year term of office. Not going to happen. Good luck. You now have 60,517 60, rallods in the treasury. Fire six country, man, and 2,000 square miles of land. This year, industry will buy land. For 97 rallies for square mile, land cost currently costs 14 to plant. I don't know. How many square miles do you want to sell to industry? Uh, five, a thousand. I have no idea what I'm doing. How many rallies will you distribute among your countrymen? It doesn't need 100 rallies to survive, so I guess I'll give them, let's say, 5,500. How many square miles do you want to plant? A thousand. I'm sorry, you only have. Zero square miles of farmland. What do you mean? I said I have 2,000 square miles of land. What is that? I don't understand. I only sold 1,000 to industry, and I said I have 2,000 at the beginning, right? So what did I... I don't know I have zero now. Oh, this is only half my land is farmland. Oh, great. So I sold all of it? I didn't realize that. All right, well, I didn't know that. All right, so zero then. How many rallies you spent on pollution control? I don't know, 1,000. Four fifty one countrymen died of starvation. Why? I fed them all, didn't I? Thirteen countrymen died of carbon monoxide and dust inhalation. You're forced to spend four thousand one hundred seventy six rallies on funeral expenses. Thousand one five workers came to the country and fourteen countrymen came to the island. Of zero miles planned, you harvested zero square miles of crowd, you make zero rods, you made thirty thirteen thousand from tourist trade, decreased because hotels looking shabby to smog grit. 464 countrymen died in one year. Due to this extremist management, you've not only been impeached and thrown out of office, but you've also had your left eye gouged out. That's not good. <laughs> what the hell did I do wrong, though? I don't understand. It said that I gave... Did I give them money? I gave 5,500 to my countrymen. And it said they only need 100... 100... It said they need... A, uh, what the hell? Wait a second. It said each person needs 100 rallies per year to survive. And I gave 5,500. Oh, there was... F <laughs> My math is, like, way off. No. <laughs> I gave 5,500. They need 100 per year to survive. That's why I, 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 I was off by a zero there. That's why I, they all died. But you know what? Like, the hell with this game. I don't like I don't like these kind of games. So I'm not... Unless anybody wants me to continue this, like, I want to move on to the next one. I, I just don't like these kind of games. They're, just, they're boring to me. Any, any any thoughts before I move on? <laughs> I don't like doing these math problems in the middle of the, middle of the game, honestly. Mark says you didn't install CO, carbon monoxide detectors. <laughs> math is off. I had to hire you as my accountant. Mark says move on. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, what's the next game? Letter. All right, this I don't even want to play this, but we'll do this just quickly. It's another stupid guessing game. This will be quick. Change game. Hopser Key, how's it going, man? Hopser Key, you know what? You were in the hockey game also. Last week we played hockey on this channel, and you were in the hockey game. Mark was in the hockey game too. He doesn't know it. It was all like you know regulars from the channel that were in the hockey game. So if you didn't see that stream from last week, it was also the same thing. The DOS games, or not DOS games, basic games. You should go back and watch towards the end. We play hockey, and you were a major uh, contributor there, if I remember correctly. So. Hopster Key, I'm pretty sure you were in that game. All right, well, anyway, uh, this letter is probably really stupid. If I, if I spell it right, it might work. All right, I'll try to think of a letter of the alphabet, A to Z. Guess my letter. This is really stupid. What's your guess? Uh, M. Too low. Try a higher letter. Uh, R. No, maybe like T. Too high. Try a lower letter. Q. Too low. Uh, R. Good job. All right, that's game stupid. All right, next game. Next game is <laughs> take a shot every time Stu says it's not your turn. Right? 
No, for, for the hockey game you're talking about. Because <laughs> you kept on calling other people's moves. All right, this game is life. Oh, they have a life game. That's so interesting. Um, this is not really a game. It's like a simulation of life, which I've seen before. And I'm not sure how this... It may not work well on this, this screen. It probably prints stuff out. Um, enter your pattern. I don't really have a pattern. How do I enter a pattern? Uh, do I have to enter a pattern? Oh, sheesh. All right, it makes me enter a dumb pattern. I'll try, I'll try to enter the pattern they have here, if I can. Uh, star... How do I do this? Dot... Dot... Star... Space... Space... Star... 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 Dot... Space... Star... Space... Space... Star... Dot... Space... No, dot... Star... Space... 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 Star... Done. I'll just do with the, what power they did in the book. Well, that's pretty freaking crazy. I think it's crashed. All right, hold on a second. See if I can go back and do that. See what, what it did here. I probably overran the buffer. All right, so it's, this is supposed to be printing out like on a on a teletype or something. Carlos Portugal, hold on. A hey, Ross, hey, how's it going? A long time no see. Carlos Portugal, looking for this game. At least a picture. It's called Freddy. I believe it was a platformer, like Sonic or Alex Kid, but the boy had no legs or arms. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm just laughing at Ryan saying Alfred and the Feta. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and instead of rings, you would catch CDs. A legless, armless Sonic who collected CDs. And said if we're healthy, you would capture Mars bars. We were shrunken. We were in our garden. It sounds like, like how do you shrunk the kids? I have, I have no idea off the top of my head. It's called Freddy something? Fearless Freddy? Was that the, the big top, whatever? That's all that I can think of. The enemies were bees and ants. I don't know. All right, well, so, look, what happened, the way this game life works is that if you're, I don't know why a star appeared over there, but it's it's, a, it's basically a simulation. Every turn, it decides what happens next next turn in the, in the life cycle based on, um, you can see my mouse, right? Um, if a, if a, each one of these dots represents a cell, if a cell has like has no neighbors, it dies from isolation. If it has too many neighbors, it dies from overcrowding. And if it has like two or three, then it's stable and it can survive. And then I think if it has like here exactly three neighbors, if there's any any and blank cell with exactly three neighbors, like this one maybe, not this one, maybe I don't know. If there's any blank cell with exactly three neighbors, a cell is born there and it reproduces. Hey Jim, how's it going? Yeah, Frantic Freddy. That's only what I heard of, but I, I don't know. Why is this the game of life? I have this in my pebble. What's a pebble? All right, so basically, every generation, it keeps on, like, evolving based on those rules I just said. And you can make it do cool stuff, but this is not... I'll, I'll come back to life at some point, but this is not the right way to play it because this is meant to play on, like, a printer, a teletype. And, you know, you want a version that actually you can see evolving on the screen, not like something like this, because it's very hard to follow. Although, oh, that's interesting. This looks like the guy, this looks like the game is giving me the finger, I think. Or maybe it's like a head. I'm not sure what that is. It's like a more evolved finger. I'm not sure what that is. A wishbone or maybe something else. I'm not sure. That looks interesting. I'm not going to say what I think that looks like. It's some interesting patterns you can get here. Like a bug or something. It's actually pretty interesting how this stuff evolves. Like, you don't really know what's going to happen until you run the program. It became, it became a very interesting sort of shape. It looks like Skeletor now or something. What year was this released? This this actually... So this game... this This... This this thing was described in the October 1970 issue of Scientific American, which I happen to have here. I think this is the one where um, where the, this game was described. Life. This guy John Conway, a mathematician, came up with it. And so this this implementation though is from I don't know when uh, early 70s, I guess. 
Are you are we talking? I don't know if shops are key. If you're asking me, if you're asking uh, Carlos, but that's the answer about this one. Uh, yeah. So population fifty six. I don't want to take invalid population seventy four. Invalid. I don't know what invalid means. Something the program is crashing or something. Looks like goggles. Looks like a guy. It is sort of interesting how it evolves. At some point, it looked like it got to a stable configuration. Maybe like in generation one hundred. I, I, this is like sort of. I think people like actually played this game and just sort of like sat and watched it because it was like sort of hypnotic. Conway died just a few weeks ago, really. So what are you guys saying here? Uh, Conway's game of life. Pebble smartwatch. Oh, cool. Windows ninety eight. Oh, so so Jim says it was Freddy 1998 Windows. You're asking me, okay? Cool. <laughs> Conway life is very influential. Yeah, agreed. And I know Conway died just a few years ago, a few weeks ago, plus a year. Okay, a year ago. All right, still, it's still. I, didn't, I mean, that's interesting. I didn't know he died just recently. I'm glad Carlos, you got what you were looking for there. Thankfully, uh, Jim and uh, Mark and other smart folks are on the the stream here to help you out. Okay, I'm gonna start to. Okay, I think this is like the. Pretty much the stable config. Actually, these things, these guys are stable. Looks like I don't know why. Yeah, I guess there's just four of them, and I think in the middle is like dying or evolving still. And okay, now it looks like it got to a stable configuration, and that's it. And it's gonna be like this till the end of time. So our vibrant colony turned into into this one here. Uh, Jeremy says I don't know what's up with this chap. I think he resang it every second. Yeah, I don't know either. Sorry about that. I mean, that's the game of life. So basically, what you, you would, what they would do is they'd put in the, all these different patterns to start with and see where they ended up. And um, there was actually like a bounty in the beginning if you could figure out like certain things. Like one of the things they were trying to do was have a glider that moved across the screen. They called it and spit out like like other things like like a car spitting out gas. And there was a way to do that, but they, in the beginning they didn't know how. And there's some kind of bounty for the first person to figure it out. They got some cash prize or something. But that is the game of life. Next thing is called Life for Two. Life for Two? What the hell is this? Wait, I'm just going to read the instructions here from the book. Life 2 is based on Conway's game of life. You must be familiar with the rules of life for Teddy to play Life 2. There are two players. The game is played on a 5x5 five five board, and each player is a symbol to represent his own pieces of life. Live cells are belong to player 1 are represented by a star, an asterisk, and live cells by player 2 are by the symbol, the hash sign. The guard is the same except when decided to generate a live cell. An empty cell having two, star, two hashes and one star will generate a hash i.e. the live cell generated belongs to the player as the majority of the three live cells surrounding the empty cell. Uh, this seems like way too complicated. I'm not, I'm not going to try to play this now. It's like, I, I mean, this is probably super duper complicated and I'm just going to skip it. All right, the next one is Literature Quiz. And it seems like very short too, so let's see what that is. Uh... Lit quiz. Test your knowledge of children's literature. This is a multiple choice quiz. Type a one, two, three, or four after the question mark. Good luck. In Pinocchio, what was the name of the cat? Tigger, Cicero, Figaro, or G G G Geppetto? Uh, does anybody know? <laughs> Figaro was the figure of the, the cat or the fish. Figaro was the cat, I think, right? I think Figaro is the cat. I'm going to say Figaro. Very good. Here's another. From whose garden did Bugs Bunny steal the carrots? Mr. Nixon's, Elmer Fudd's, Clem Judd's, or Stromboli? That was Elmer Fudd. Pretty good. In The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's dog was named Toto. Who's the fair maid who ate the poison apple? Snow White. Wow, that's super. You really know your nursery. Next quiz will be on second century Chinese literature. Ha, ha, ha. All right, well, that was pretty stupid. All right, the next one is called Love. This is not a, not a game, I don't think. Looks like it's just an art thing, but let's just do it quickly. Love. Love, exciting and new. All right. A tribute to the great American artist Robert Indiana. His greatest work will be reproduced in the message of your choice up to 
60 characters. Mark says, love is not a game. That's yeah, very profound, Mark. If you can't think of a message, simply type the word love. Your message, please. Let's try love first of all. Let's see what happens. Alright, it's, like, it's just like some stupid ASCII art. What happens if I type in a different message? It'll just probably make the words in the back different. I'll try that, just for the heck of it. Stu's Game Reviews. Okay, I, I, I mean, this is sort of stupid. I don't see the point of this, but, like, whatever. That's, that's, they, need, they need 101 games for this book, so... All right, what's the next one here? Lunar. Lunar is like a Lunar Lander type game, but not as good as the actual Atari game, probably, because it's probably just text. But let's see what it is. Lunar. This is a computer simulation of a Apollo Lunar Landing capsule. The onboard computers failed. It was made by Xerox. That's not nice. So you have to land the capsule manually. It was set burn rate of retro rockets at any value between zero free fall and 200 maximum burn pounds per second. It's a new burn every 10 seconds. Capsule rate, 32,000. See, this is much better when you're actually controlling it, like with a joystick or something, because you can see what's happening. Like, I'm not good, I'm not good at these math games. This is probably like for, like, you know, physics majors in college or something. Um, all right, I don't know. I'll just, I'll just try one time, though. Um, miles per hour... 100, what, 120 miles, 300 miles per hour. Let's go burn rate 200. Okay, I'm still... Let's try, I don't know, 175. Oh, man. I'm like, I went down really far. 200. I dropped from... Oh, I didn't drop that fast. 110 to 102. Let's still go 200. 88, I'm going 2,009 miles per hour. 200. Okay, let's go now 175. Okay, I slowed down quite a bit there. Am I running out of fuel? Oh, I do. Oh, I only have 5,000 pounds of fuel left. That's not good. All right, 150. I'm going to crash. 100. I'm like not falling very fast anymore. Zero. <laughs> Why am I like barely moving? Oh, fall, damn it. Zero. <sighs> I feel like I have no chance here. It's like really. I, I'm just not good at this type of game. Is the bottom line. I we know we're gonna die. I mean, it's just a question of timing. Come on, get your ass down there. <sighs> wow, I'm almost I was out of fuel. I don't know. <sighs> How does it? How do I run out of fuel so fast? If I have twelve fifty and I use fifty, oh, because it's only it's per it's per twenty. I see it's it's only for. All right, I'm, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die really bad. <laughs> I'm really dead. Love is a battlefield? Yeah, it is. Love is a battlefield. Do, 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 do. 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 I, want, I wish this thing would, like, like fall. Like, get down to the ground. Can kill, just kill me, Ray. Just, just kill me. <laughs> All right. Dead. There are no survivors. You blew it. In fact, you blasted a new looter creator. I, the hell with this. I, I, these games suck. I, I'm not good at these looter landing games. And the next one is also similar. It's called Lem. It lets you control the time interval of firing, the thrust, and the attitude angle. No, I'm not doing that. And there's also Rocket, 
Which, which, no, no way. All right. The next one is Mastermind. Uh, I don't know. All right, I'll, I'll do Mastermind, but it shouldn't, this should be very quick. I mean, again, this is another, like, basic, very basic game. We got a comp, it's like either the games are too hard or too easy for me, basically. Number of colors, let's just make it simple. Let's say five colors, number of positions, four, number of rounds, one. I don't know what that means. All right. Uh, move one, guess. What did Mark say? Uh, it's practically impossible. A oh, famous computer scientist, E.W. Dykstra, once said about basic. It's practically impossible to teach good programming students to have a prior explosion of basic. Special programmers are mentally mutilated beyond hope of regeneration. That's interesting. I don't know about that. I think I learned basic as my first language. B.W.R.G. You have one blacks and zero whites. What does that mean? Uh... Black, black means the right color in the right position. One means the right color not in the right position. I guess a lot of duplicates then. Uh, let's try B O O B O O O O. You have two blacks and zero whites. Let's try B O O B B O B B Bob. You guessed it in three moves. I guess that was in honor of Rob Bob. Uh, we, we got we got Bob as our thing. I thought it was be boob, but we got Bob instead. I say no more of that. Yeah, I learned basic first. I'm not mentally related at all. That was that was a really long program in terms of the listing, by the way. Like considering like how basic it was. All right, math dice. What's math dice? Oh, it's like a it's like a quiz or something. I'll just try it quickly. Math dice. This program generates successive pictures of two dice. So, in two dice, an equal sign followed by a question mark and printed. Type your answer in the control key, the return key. So, one plus five equals six. <gasps> right! Five plus two equals seven. Oh my god, I'm so smart. Let's, let's not play this anymore. Carlos is very excited because he found the game. Scott is the, 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 stuffed himself with pizza and devoured a giant cookie. Right, we got to find a better game. The next one is called Mugwump. All right, this is similar to the other one because they're searching for something. So let's just do it quickly. Mugwump. The object of this game is to find four mugwumps hidden on a 10 by 10 grid. Home base is position zero zero. Any guess you be two numbers. First number is to the right of home base, X is above home base. Alright, it's the same thing as before, basically. Five comma five. Oh, forget this. I'm not doing this. <laughs> no, nope, not nope, nope, nope. Hunt the Wumpus was the original, Gary says. Hey Gary, um I think these games actually may have come before Hunt the Wumpus in terms of these searching things. Hey Chris, how you doing? It's the Stew In Eater Stew In Eater Six Thousand. Put my glasses on. And Chris Scott says it's a long time since you handled your mug up. That's not true. You handle your mug up like every single day. We're we're all aware of that. All right, let's try name. This is just something stupid, I think too. But let's just see it here. My name is Creative Computer. What's your name? Sphere said last. Stew's reviews. <laughs> Oops, thank you, Sweevers Utz. Oops, I got it backwards. A smart computer should, like me shouldn't make a mistake like that. But it doesn't your layers are out of order. Let's put them in order like this. Don't you like that better? No. Sorry I don't like it that way. Okay, that's, well, that's was lots of fun. All right, next here is Nicomachus. This is also sort of looks sort of stupid. We gotta get through some of these bad ones to get to the good ones. At least with the, the bad ones are really quick. Chris says every other day <laughs> not an animal. Gary, all these games are from the seventies. All all the, the games are playing here are all from the seventies right now. So um, yeah um, I have. Uh, Basically, there was this there was this magazine called People's Computer Company that started in 1972, and this game Harkle and Mugwump they originated there, and then in 1973, I believe, or maybe the end of 72, 
this guy Gregory Yob created Hunt the Wumpus, and he submitted it to People's Computer Company. So it was like a, it was an, ev an evolution of some of those other games. Also, some games called Caves that were similar. All right, Boomerang Puzzle from Arithmetica of <laughs> Marcus the Town. This book's put the word games in quotes. Yeah, I agree. Some of the there, there, are, there are some really good ones. We just this, these are not the good ones. Think of them from one in a hundred. You're never be divided by three as a remainder of. So by the way, you have to remember also, this is all they had. So like. Even this stupid game, like, someone was like, wow, it's trust me, this dumb game, or do my physics homework. So, I guess I'll play this dumb game. <laughs> All right, let me think of a number. Uh, let's think of, I think of 69. All right. Your number divided by 3 is a remainder of 0. Your number divided by 5 has a remainder of 4. Your number divided by 7 has a remainder of, I guess, 6. Your number was 69, right? Yes. How about that? Let's try another. No, let's not try another. The next one is Nim, which we've definitely seen before. Uh, all right, well, I'll just do it quickly. Oops, no, no, no. Nim. This is the game of Nim. Do you want instructions? Yes, I used to play this in high school. This game was played a number of piles of objects. Any number of objects are removed from one pile by you and the machine alter alternately. On your turn, you may take all the objects to remain in any pile, but you must take at least one object to make the objects. You must specify whether winning is defined as taking or not taking the last object, the number of piles in the game, the objects are in the pile. The machine will show its move. All right, whatever. Enter win option. One to take last, two to avoid last. Let's say two. Enter number of piles. Oh, I, you know, I, this is like a... Right, let's say three. I haven't played this in a very long time. Enter pile sizes. Uh, I don't know. 20, 20, 20. I'm going to lose, basically. Do you want to move first? I mean, I don't, I don't, I, it's been such a long time since I played this game. Ryan says, okay, guys, watching TV with the wife. Ryan, you'll be back, just like last time. And Mark says, yeah, I can appreciate that. 1973 P8's Crossle K Adventure, P8's Rovia. Yeah, exactly. This, there wasn't much to do. It's this or nothing. Um, so the, the purpose of this game, I guess, is you can take... Oh, you can take all the objects that remain in any pile, but you must take at least one object. So I'm going to lose, but let's say, yeah, I'll, I'll move first. You move pile, common number to be removed. Um, let me take... Let's see... I don't know. Number one, and I'll take the whole pile. No, that's bad. I'll take everything except for one. I don't know what to do. All right, he took the last one. I'll take number two, and I'll take everything except one. Machine wins. Why did Machine win? Like, you didn't even tell me why. How did he win? I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised Machine wins, but, like, what was Machine's move? That's crap. All right. Hell with that. All right. Next is called Number. We'll get a couple of good ones, hopefully, soon. Number. You have 100 points. By guessing numbers from 1 to 5, you can gain or lose points, pay how close you get to a random number selected by a computer. You occasionally will get a jackpot, which will double your point count. You win when you get 500 points. Okay. That seems sort of stupid, but let's try it anyway. Guess number from 1 to 5. Uh, 3. You have 50 points. Guess number from 1 to 5. 4. You have 45 points. 45. 2. You have 40 points. 1. You have 3, 5 points. 5. I got that one right. 4. 4. You got 1 point for that? Oh, it's about how close you get. Okay. So three is the best one to guess, isn't it? You hit the jackpot. <laughs> Not doing too well here. How about fast will I get wiped out? I have eight points. Fifteen. One point two five. I mean. I have negative negative points now. I have, oh, I, when I hit the jackpot, I had negative points. It doubled my negative score. All right, let's heck with this. That's a waste of time. 
And Tom Adam, Adam, Adam Metz wrote this program while a student at Curtis Junior High School in Sudbury, Massachusetts, and it shows. All right, the next one is called One Check. One Check. <laughs> one Check. Okay, what is this? Just got a rare pink Japanese PSP 3000. Working. Oh, nice. That's cool. All right, Solitaire Checker Puzzle by David All. 48 checkers are placed in the two outside spaces of a standard 64 square checkerboard. The object to remove as many checkers as possible by diagonal jumps and stair checkers. The number of board to get the screen is a jump for it, too. No, I'm not doing this. This is the type of game, again, when it would be much better to play it on an actual checkerboard than to try to play it on a computer because, like, I can't, like, I have to keep remembering what numbers everything is, and that's not happening. Next. Next one is called Orbit. Orbit says, The object is to detonate a photon explosive within a certain distance of a germ-laden Romulan spaceship. Okay, let's try that one. Chris says, It's completed the box. What it read disk does now. That's awesome. Good job. Chris is pretty good at putting at fixing stuff. Pretty, pretty amazing at fixing stuff, actually. All right, what the hell is this? Uh, I'm going to scroll up here. Somewhere above your planet is a Romulan ship. The ship is in a constant polar orbit. It's distance from the center of your planet is from 10,000 to 30,000 miles. Its present velocity can circle the planet once every 12 to 36 hours. Unfortunately, using a cloaking device, you're unable to see them. With a special instrument, you can see how near their ship your photon bomb exploded. You have seven hours until they have built up sufficient power in order to escape your planet's gravity. What's wrong if they escape? We're like bloodthirsty here? Your planet has enough power to fire one bomb an hour. The of each hour will be estimated at an angle, a distance, and an explosion within 5,000 bombs will, will, will destroy it. Within 5,000 miles will destroy it. Blow a diagram to help you visualize your plight. Okay. Your planet is X. The orbit of the object is O. On the above diagram, the robot ship is circling contra clients around your planet. Don't forget, without sufficient power, the robot ship's altitude and orbital rate will be constant. Good luck. The variation is counting on you. Okay. This is hour one. At what angle? Do you, I don't know. Zero. How far do you wish to detonate it? It said it was going 10,000 to 30,000 miles. So I'll say 20,000. Your photon bomb exploded really damn far from the Romulan ship. This is hour number two. Does he go around the planet? I don't know. Okay, 180. Let's say 20,000 again. Now I'm even further away from this thing. How fast does it go around the freaking thing? Once every... Th oh, okay. Okay, so he's pretty far. <laughs> Chris says, I feel like, Scott says, I feel like you've, Stu has now played more Star Trek games than anyone on Earth, probably. And Chris says, I feel like you've learned me of the sexy stream you're now doing math homework for trail is real. It'll get better. I promise it'll get better. I mean, there has to be some good games like that hockey game. Uh, but you're right, this game sort of sucks. I'm just trying to see if I can just blow up this goddamn ship. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, okay, 90. How far did you detonate it? 20,000. I'm like nowhere near the freaking thing. 270. 15,000. I'm getting closer, I think. Uh, let's say 270. Uh, I don't know. 90 again. 10,000. Getting closer. I'm getting closer. Uh, 45. 5,000. What? I don't understand here. Like, times 10 to the 2? I'm, like, really far away or something. 45, 1,000. I allowed the Robins to escape. Another Robin show has gone to orbit. No, the hell with that. Goodbye. Goodbye to you, too. Our next one is called Pizza. Scott, it's called Pizza. So it's probably, it must be really good. Scott's says Saturday's Betrayals. <laughs> It's not a trail night. This is old, old, old games that people used to love, and they were so happy to play them. Pizza delivery game. What is your first name, Scott? 
Uh, okay, let's see here. Hi, Scott. This game, you're going to take orders for pizzas. Then you're going to tell a delivery boy where to deliver the ordered pizzas. Map of the city of Hyattsville. The output is a map of homes where you just send pizzas. Your job is to give a truck driver the location of the corner of the home ordering the pizza. Do you need more directions? Yes, I know what you're talking about. Somebody will ask for a pizza to be delivered. Then a delivery boy will ask you for the location. Example, this is Jay. Please send a pizza. Driver to Scott, where does Jay live? Your answer will be 2-3. Understand? I mean, yeah, but it sounds really dumb. Okay, you're ready to start taking orders. Good luck. Hello, Scott's Pizza. This is B. Please send a pizza. Driver to Scott, where does B live? 1, 2, I think. Right? 1, 2. This is E. I did not order a pizza. I live at 1, 2. So I guess that wasn't 1, 2. Uh, it must be 2, 1. 2, 1. Hello, Scott. This is B. Thanks for the pizza. Oh, this really sucks. <laughs> Mark says, when I order a pizza, I get my latitude and longitude. Yeah, sure. All right, next. This game is long. Oh, okay. This one's called Poetry. This pro program reduces random verse, which might loosely be considered the Japanese haiku style. Let's try it and see. This is a good game for your, for your students, Scott. Poetry. Oh, my God. It was just going on forever. What the hell is this? Think of evil still sitting, darkness are slowly creeping, prophet, begali, quoth the raven. Uh, Alright, whatever. This is obviously ridiculous. Our next one is poker. Poker, okay. Poker is good. We don't we like poker. Let's poker. How should we poker? Welcome to the casino. <laughs> good one of quest teachers in my class. Uh, Chris says Pretty cool, actually, using a user story information array to deliver a piece of the concept. All right. Well, we're going to see that we each have $200. I'll open the betting before the draw. You open after. I'll, to full bet zero, check bet point five. Enough talk. Let's get down to business. The ante is five bucks. I will deal. Your hand. King of spades, two king of hearts, four of diamonds, two spades, nine of hearts, two diamonds, and purple horseshoes. I check. What is your bet? I have a pair of twos. I'll bet. I'll check also. How many cards do you want? Three. What are their numbers? One, two, and four. Oh, I guess it's one. Two, four. Oh, I got two pair. Two pair now. What is your bet? Uh, I don't know. How much money do I have? What did it say? How much money do I have? 200 bucks. I'll bet 10 bucks. I'll bet 20 bucks. He's going to fold probably. I'll see you and raise you 21. What is your bet? No small change, please. 21. You have two pair and I have three jacks. I win. Uh, I'm not good at poker. <laughs> Check that FBI. I to ride those deuces to glory and call. Right, I'll try one more time. King of hearts, six of diamonds, four. What is your bet? I'll open with 39. You crazy? I'm out. I was gonna fold. Yeah, good. Let's continue. Yes. I'll open with thirty-one. This guy is really like a like a like an aggressive better. I mean, I have a pair of queens now, but should, 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 like, should I call against with a pair of queens? And he's opening with thirty-one dollars. I guess probably should, right? What do you guys say, Scott? You're the gambler. What do you think? What's your bet, Scott? Put your money where your mouth is. Call. All right. Oh, I can't do that. Call. 31. Now we draw. How many cards do you want? Three, two, four, and five. Well, I didn't, I didn't do too well here. <laughs> it's $200. Scare him by the pot. All right, let's try that. A uh, hundred dollars. You have a queer of queen. I'll see you. You have a pair of queens and I have schmaltz. King high. You win. Now I have 115 and you have 285. Yay. That was a good strategy. It actually worked. Now let's do one more hand. Seven, eight, ten. I check. What is your bet? Let's bet 20. I fold. You win. 
<laughs> Scott's very happy with that. Wah! Who we got now? Aces. I check. Let's bet fifty dollars. I fold. One more. This time I got bookcase. I'm not. I'm not betting in this one. I have a pair of fours. It was a thirty-two. Let me fold this time. Well, one more. One more. I can hand. I mean, I guess like, I'll check, but I really have crap. Let's take uh, five cards. <laughs> you can't draw more than three cards. Why the hell not? You can draw. You can draw five cards. Or I guess I'll get rid of one. One. Oh, ugh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that wasn't fair. That was bull crap. All right, whatever. I got a pair of queens though somehow. Ten. I fold. I prefer Texas hold them. Yeah, me too. All right, so that's enough for that. Let's try to see the next game. This was a really long, like a lot of code in this game. If you see like two two big fat pages of code, and there was more on the page before. All right, next one is called Queen. What? This game is based on the permissible moves of the chess queen, i.e. along any vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. In this game, the queen can only move to the left, down, and diagonally down to the left. The option is to place the queen, the one only, in the lower left-hand square by alternating moves between you and the computer. The one who places queen square there wins. You go first, place the queen anywhere in the square in the top row or the right-hand column. That is your first move. All right, let's try it one time. I played a game in the 80s, 70s before my time, but card games were massively popular. It might be too, but I, I didn't play too many gambling games. Do you want instructions? I mean, I just read them, so let's say all right, yes. Whew, whoa. You're playing a game based on chess moves. Yeah, I just read that. Da, da, da. You, you made four favorite attacks. Zero is your move. So I got to type in the, the box, the, the, the number there. Oh, my God. All right, so it's 21. Q moves to square 126. Where the hell is that? I don't even see 126. Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. So he's going to beat me, basically. And no matter what I do, I lose. What is your move? Pull the plug. Negative one. You cheat. <laughs> try again. No. <laughs> I said no. Oh, it's just try again. Okay. Zero. Looks like I have one by forfeit. Anyone else care to try? No. Okay, thanks again. All right, next. Reverse. Uh, okay, reverse. Reverse, a game of skill. Do you want the rules? Yes. This is a game of reverse. To win, all you have to do is arrange a list of numbers 1 through 9 in numerical order from left to right. To move, you tell me how many numbers kind of the left you to reverse. For example, if the current list is... Two, three, four, five, one, six, seven. You reverse four, the result will be that. If you reverse five, you win. No doubt you will like this game, but if you want to quit, reverse zero. I don't think I'm going to like this game. Here we go. The list is. This looks like impossible. What the hell am I supposed to do here? I got to rev make a reversal. I don't know. Eight. Uh, nine. Okay, that's actually, actually, that's actually, I did something good. I'm not sure how, but that was actually good. Now, if I reverse, um, four, maybe. And now I'll reverse six. And now I'll reverse three. And now I'll reverse five. This is like the long way to victory, but it should work. Two. And then four. You won it in eight moves. Try again. No way. Okay, hope you had fun. Well, it was fun for like five seconds. <sighs> Let's see, what's next? Rock, scissors, paper. I mean, like, okay, I mean, <laughs> it's not going to be very long, right? Rock, scissors, paper. After that is roulette. Rock, scissors. How many games? One. 
Rock, scissors, paper. What's your choice? I'll go for rock. This is my choice. Paper, I win. All right, good for you. Next, roulette. <laughs> so that's a scissors. Sorry, but you would have won if you had said scissors. Roulette. Enter the current date. Is it January 23rd? It's probably to blow this up, but okay. May. Oh, happy May Day, everybody. Welcome to the roulette table. Do you want instructions? Yes. Oh, my God. This is the betting layout. Stars are red. Types of bats that are one to three, two of them. I'm not good at this. Scott, what do you want to do? How many bats? <laughs> Scott, I'll let you do this. I'm not like, uh, I'm not good at these types of games. Next is Russian roulette. <laughs> uh, Russian roulette's probably more fun than this. Scott's like, oh man, what the... Alright, fine, I'll do it. How many bets? One. I uh, will say... Uh, odd. Number one, 46. Is how much am I betting? 500. Spinning. Six black. You lose $500 at bet one. Me, 100,500. You, 500. Alright, again, yes. How many bets? One. We'll bet odd again. And we'll bet this much. Oh, that's not good for you? It's too much? Well, I only have 500 So Sorry, well, let me bet more than I have. You win $500, I bet one. I don't play roulette. I know a little bit about the game. I always view the most sucker of sucker games. I think you're probably right. All right, next. Let's go to Russian roulette. Russian roulette. This is a game of Russian roulette. Here's a revolver. Type 1 to spin chamber and pull trigger. Type 2 to give up. All right. 1. Bang. You're dead. <laughs> Condolences will be sent to your relatives. Next victim. Let's say 1. Click. Right, what's the point of that? Basically, you just die. Just It's a question of, of when. I don't see the point of that. This is a dark game. <laughs> All right, I trust coins as coin pushing machines to play roulette. Those coin pushing machines are sort of fun. All right, Salvo is next. This looks like Battleship to me. But let's actually try it and see. Yeah, it's basically Battleship. I'm not doing this. There's much better Battleship games than this. I'm not doing it. Next, Sine Wave. Sine wave. It's like a demo program. Sine wave. <laughs> All it does is make like a, a like a little picture. That's it. Okay. Next is called slalom. We're getting we're getting there. How many gates does this course have? One to twenty five. Let's try five. Type ins for instructions, max for approximate maximum speeds, run for the end of the race. Say ins. This is the 1976 Winter Olympic Giant Slalom. You are the American team's only hope for gold medal. The, the American team is screwed then. Zero. Type this if you want to see. Is you want to see how long you've taken. Type, type one. Type this if you want to speed up a lot. Two. Type this if you want to speed up a little. Three. Type this if you want to speed up a teensy. Four. Keep going at the same speed. Five. Check a teensy. Six. Check a little. Seven. Check a lot. Eight, if you want to cheat and try to skip a gate. The place to use this option is when the computer asks option. They type max for approximate maximum speeds. Gate 1, 14, 2, 18, 20. Uh, okay. Command. Uh, run for the beginning of the race. Rate yourself as a skier. One worst, three best. Definitely worst. Here comes gate number 1. 13 miles per hour. Option. So let's... Speed up a teensy. That went too fast. Here comes gate number two, 15 miles per hour. Let's speed up a uh, teensy again. 60 miles per hour. Here comes gate three, 60 miles per hour. We gotta speed up a lot. 24 miles per hour. Here comes gate five. Speed up a little. Here comes gate seven. Let's slow down a lot. You took 38 seconds. Do you want to race again? What the hell is the point of that? 
<laughs> Gamers Grab says, Hi, sorry. The live chat was really annoying me, so I have to go punch Cedric the Owl. Big lag issues. Anybody else having lag? I think it's just you, uh, Gamers Grotto. Oh, Gamers Grotto, please don't punch me. I'm your friend, Cedric. Don't punch me, please. I love when you hang out with me. In fact, let's go together and find some nice to eat. Gamers Grotto decides to punch Cedric right in the face. Oh, Gamers Grotto, please stop. Please don't do that. No, please don't beat me. Oh, please, Gamers Grotto. <laughs> I hate you, Stu. <laughs> do you want to race again? No. Thanks for the race. Yeah, thank you, too, Jackass. Our next game was called Slots. Another gambling game. They had nothing to do but gamble back in those days. You were in the H&M Casino in front of one of our one of our bandits. Bet from 100 to 100 scotches. We can get to do cabinet recordings when you want to punch the pillow. To pull the arm, punch through a turkey after making your bet. All right, my bet. Five bucks. Bar, bar, lemon. You won. Double bar. That's it? Again? All right, yes. Oh, it's with the... Well, that game sucked anyway. In the picture, in the in the in the uh, in the book, it makes it look like there's actually some graphics here. See, but apparently not. So that sucks. Next, it's called Splat. This is just like the Lunar Lander game. Similarly, it's a parachute job where you try to open your parachute at the last possible minute without going splat. You may select your own terminal velocity and let the computer do it for you. You may also select the acceleration due to gravity or get the computer do it. What? Well, let's just try it one time. You never played any of the... Any, I've only never played the new Scott. I, think, I don't think Cedric is in any of them, but I haven't played it either, um, Scott. Oh, I wish they'd let me in those new games. They're such good games and I miss him being in them. Where's Graham when I need him? Welcome to Splat. Okay, I just said that already. Such your own terminal velocity? No. Okay, terminal velocity is 3 to 3 miles an hour. What's that? Like, gravity? No. Okay, you're on Mercury. I right, should fall pretty soon. Set a timer for your free fall. I gotta guess in advance? I don't know. 10. Shoot open. Amazing. Not bad for your first successful jump. I just could guess. You want to play again? No. Please? F off. Yes or no, please? No! S what does S mean? You're just not happy with me. Alright. Next game is, is Stars. Another guessing game? Alright, one more stupid guessing game. And then we're going to get to... The next one after that is something different. Stars. You want instructions? Yes. I'm thinking of a whole number from one two hundred. Oh, Center Cameo and fan remakes of King's Quest. Yeah, like the one where, where it's like uh, the madness of King Graham. That one. Where he's like, oh, Graham, sorry, I'm late. And he's like, you have to kill a foul beast. Is it? Is it the dragon of whatever? No, something even more horrendous than that. And he's like, oh, sorry, I'm late. That. And they start chasing him. That was actually really funny. All right, I'm thinking of a whole of 1 200. Try to guess my number. After you guess, I'll type one or more stars. Worst time, so I pot time. The closer you are to the number. D -d 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 -d. All right, start guessing. 50. Two stars. 75. Four stars. I'm closer. 90. Really close. 92. That's bad. Uh, 88. 89. You got it. Six guesses. Let's play again. Negative one. Negative 5,000. Wow, I'm surprised it didn't crash. Your guess. That much. Wow. I'm really impressed it didn't crash, but I'm not playing this anymore. This game is how the price is right. Yeah, the price is right. It's better. It's like, it's like 1,100. 1,200. Higher. 1,250. Higher. 1,260. Lower. 1,251. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. I don't want really to let them do that, but they always do on prices, right? Let them see just the last last digit, and they get away with that. Funniest and saddest cameo ever, yeah. All right, stock market. Let's see. This probably sucks, too, but we'll try it anyway. Stock market. All right. Do you want the instructions? Yes. 
Okay, let's go back up and read them. This program plays the stock market. You will be given $10,000 to buy or sell stocks. The stock prices will be generated randomly, therefore this model does not represent exactly what happens on the exchange. No kidding. A table of available stocks, their prices, and the number of shares in your portfolio will be printed. Follow this initial of each stock will be printed with a question mark. You indicate a transaction. To buy a stock, press press plus something to sell or minus something. A broker sheet of 1% will be charged. If a stock value drops to zero, maybe you're found a positive value. Again, you have $10,000 to invest. Use integers to all your inputs. So it's just completely random, though. So look what that the point. Um, all right. Um, IBM International Ballistic Missiles. Let's say um, plus 100. Red Cross for America RCA plus 100. LBJ, I don't know, zero. ABC American Bankrupt Corporation plus 100. At CBS Century Bookstore, plus 100. <laughs> Tight mismatch. A line 658. Wow, that was a great one. Great program. I guess zero. They didn't like zero, apparently. All right, the next one is actually Super Star Trek. We've played it before. So I'm not going to do it again right now. I know everyone's upset about that, probably, especially Ryan and Scott. But we'll come back to it. Uh, if When I'm done with the other games, if, if, if we're finished with more time... I'll come back and play Super Star Trek because it is the next one here in the, in the book. Super Star Trek. But I want to try their stuff first. This is like the, looks like the longest print out here. There's a cartoon. Look at this. The guy's wife is moving out and while he's playing Star Trek and he says, be right with you, dear. Just got to zap one more Klingon and she's moving out on him because he's ignoring her. That's what happens when you play video games, especially Star Trek games. Uh, okay. Um, next one is called Synonym. There must be some more good ones. How many more are there in this book? Let me see. How many more are there? I just want to check. We're at like, the end of the alphabet, right? So, after Star Trek, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 more. Hmm. Okay. All right. Synonym. A synonym of a word means another word in the English language which has the same or very nearly the same meaning. I choose a word, you type a synonym. If you can't think of a synonym, type the word help and I will tell you a synonym. What is a synonym of model? I don't know, example? Try again. What is a synonym of model? Scott McAfee. Try again. What's a synonym of model? I don't know. What's the name of a model? Anybody know a the name of a model? Uh, <laughs> so nobody's giving me a synonym. I'm going to get... I'm going to... I'm gonna, not synonym. Not cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. <laughs> uh, you guys got 10 seconds to give me a, a synonym of a model. I'm just going to say help. Structure. Replica. Let's try that. Structure. Try again. Replica. Try again. All right, let's say help. A synonym of model is criterion? Is it? If you say so. Criterion. Right. What's a synonym of pit? Hole. Right. What's a synonym of pain? Agony. Try again. I guess it's a very limited game here. Yeah, it looks like they pick a word that many means they assume a specific one. This is stupid. All right. And no more. Next game is Target. In this program, you're firing a weapon from a spaceship in three-dimensional space. Your ship, the Starship Enterprise, is located at the origin of a set of XYZ coordinates. Uh, this is another one of these impossible games. I'll, I'll just, just load it up so we can see what it looks like. Target. You're the weapons officer of the Starship Enterprise. Yes, Captain. This is a test to see how accurate a shot you I am in a three-dimensional range. I can't do a good Russian accent. I will be told the radiant offset for the X and Z axes, the location of the target in three-dimensional rectangular coordinates, the approximate number of degrees from the X and Z axes, and the approximate distance to the target. I will then proceed to shoot at the target until it is destroyed. I understand, Captain. Good luck. Radiance from x-axis, 0.68929. What? Who 
bit of crap is this? Like, it has to be so damn precise. Input. Uh, let's try the numbers they gave me. 2624, comma, 2162. Oh, deviation of X is in Z. Why not Y? I don't understand this. I'm, I'm too stupid for this, I'm pretty sure. 13,000, 14,000. Shot behind target, right of target, below target. Uh, no, the hell with this. No, no way in hell this is happening. You're speaking in German. <laughs> I told you my Russian accent's not very good. <laughs> Javol. Yeah, right. All right, next. 3D plot. 3D plot will plot the family of curves of any function. This is not a game. 3 tic-tac-toe. Okay, we'll try 3D tic-tac-toe. What's the name of the actual program? It's probably with a three, right? Oh, Tic Tac Toe Two, is that it? What's test, I wonder? Which I don't want to know. Uh it means tic tac wait, is this tic tac toe one and tic tac toe two? It's regular tic tac toe and three tic tac toe. Tic tac toe one is probably regular. Let's see, tic tac toe. It did not work. Tic tac toe one. Yeah, this is just this is stupid. I mean like what's the point of this? You can't even show me the board. Computer moves eight. Ah, uh, not doing that. All right, let's try tic tac toe two. It's the same thing. Wait a second. Oh, this one actually. There's there's pictures. <laughs> I said dr dash p. Where do I move? All right, I'll go to seven. Oh, this is so much more advanced than the other one. Wow, this is amazing. Holy moly. It's a draw. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Was there a 3D one? I don't know. I don't think there is. It's about 3D tic-tac-toe got left out of this collection, unfortunately. I'll have to get the Atari 2600 game 3D tic-tac-toe and try that one. I'm sure we can find a DOS version. Um, I didn't see it, though. It looks like it's not here. Oh, well, next... So only three more games there. War, Weekday, and Word, it looks like. Oh, no, there's also Tower and Train and Trap. Sorry. Tower. It's Towers of Hanoi. I love Towers of Hanoi. You guys love Towers of Hanoi, too, right? Towers of Hanoi. Of, Han of Hanoi, it's called. Two plays, three original tic tac <laughs> The only winning move is not to play, yeah. I never thought I longed for the days of watching paint dry was entertainment. <laughs> Jim, this is high entertainment in the early 1970s, remember. Right, let's transfer the discs. We're playing an adventure game now. Let's transfer the discs from left to right, one at tower, one at a time. Better putting a larger disc on a smaller disc. How many discs do you want to move? I don't know, five. In this program, we show a root for a disc by numerical code. Three represent the smallest discs. Five the next size, seven the next. Why are you to make it confusing? You can't make it one, two, three, four, five. It has to be three, seven, five, whatever. Oh my god! All right, what disc would you like to move? I gotta tell you that. What are you gonna tell you? Number? It's the top one. All right, I, okay. All right. I, what disc would you like to move? Seven is that how it works? Place disc on which needle? Two. I gotta get to the right one, right? Oh, I, that's probably that's probably the wrong thing to do. Oh my god, my god! All right, let's let's do that again. Let's move disc seven again. Put on deal three. Nine. Put on deal two. Seven. Put on deal two. Eleven. Put on deal three. Uh. Seven. Put on deal one. Nine put on deal three. Seven put on deal three. Eleven put it, oh whoops. Not this below the one. Thirteen put on deal two. Uh seven put it on needle two. Nine, put it on needle one. Seven, put it on needle one. Eleven, put it on needle two. Uh, 
7, put it on needle 3, 9, put it on needle 2, 7, put it on needle 2, 15, put it on needle 3. Is this fun, guys? This is so much fun, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Uh, 7, put it on needle 1, 9, put it on needle 2. Oh, whoops, I meant 9, put it on needle 3. 7, put it on needle 3. Uh, 13, put it on... Wait a second. 11, put it on needle 1. 7, put it on needle 2. 9, put it on needle 1. 7, put it on needle 1. And now... 15, put it on needle 3. 13, put it on needle 3. So I meant to do. 7, put it on needle 3. 11, or 9, put it on needle 2. 7, put it on needle 2. 11, put it on needle 3. 7, put it on needle 1. 9, put it on needle 3. 7, put it on needle 3. There we go. Done. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> we never knew what stew happens. So having a stew after that day. That looks like we like what a, it took like a minute. When the last anyone heard, he was shaking his fist and it sounded like a flat disc. Some say he's still moving discs to this day. <laughs> Listen real closely at a full moon in winter's night. You can hear his captain. <laughs> Next. Train. Train is a program which uses the computer to generate problems in random initial conditions to teach about the time speed distance relationship. Alright, we'll do it one time just to see what it is. It looks like crap though. Train. The current train at 40 miles an hour makes a certain trip in 14 hours less than train traveling at 23 miles an hour. How long does a trip take by a car? I don't know. How does that make any sense, even? If the car's going faster, why would it go le Oh, 40 hours less. Okay. I'll should take my car. I don't know. Five. Sorry, you're off by 222%. No problem, though. No. All right, trap. Another guessing game. Oh, my God. All right, one more, t one more time. One once more to the breach. Instructions, Yes. I'm thinking of number two, one to hundred. Try to guess my number. Every guess you enter two numbers. Try to trap my number to two numbers. I'll tell you to trap my number for my numbers larger than two numbers, every smaller than two numbers. When I guess one single number, time you guess for both your numbers. Get success to check out my number. All right, so 25 and 75. Oh, I guess 75. You trap my number. 35 or 37 and 63. You've trapped my number. 45 and 55. My number is larger than your trap numbers. Uh, 57 and 60. Oops, 57 and 60. My number is larger than your trap numbers. Uh, 61. I only have six guesses. It's 62. You've trapped my number. Well, it's either 61 or 62. 61 and 61. You got it! Try again. No, let's not try again. <laughs> You've trapped my battleship. All right, next one is 23 matches. Oh, this is like another nib game. I'm not doing it. Nope, nope, nope. This game is war. The card game of war. Oh, my God. Why would you want to do this on a, on a, on a computer? What kind of directions do you need for this? The computer gives you in a card. The higher card wins. The game ends when you choose not to continue or you finish the pack. You, Jack of Diamonds, Computer Three of Clubs. Do you want to continue? No, I don't want to continue. Thanks for playing. It was fun. It was fun for you, I guess, not for me. Next is Weekday. This is the second to, second to last thing, I believe. Week day. Week day is a dem computer demonstration that gives facts about a date of interest to you. Enter today's date in the form 3 for 24 1979. Alright, 5 
I guess it's already the second where I am. To 2021. Enter day of birth or other day of interest. Uh, let's say from, let's say, let's say January 1st, 1973, just so like when this thing was round written, probably. Well, one ninety seven was a Monday. Your age of birthday, 48 years, four months, one day. You've slept, uh, you've eaten, you've worked, you've relaxed. You were retired in 2038. Okay, whatever. Next, I think this is the last game. Word. This is another freaking guessing game. It's like it's like Mastermind. All right, not doing that. All right, uh, we got through the whole book. I'm actually surprised. Weekday looks like one has gone by. Let's go back to the Star Trek game. Let's do that. Should I do that? What do you guys think? It's the same thing. We played this before. I don't think I'm gonna play this for too long either. The USS Enterprise. Your orders follows. Destroy 15 Klingon warships to invade the galaxy before they can. Wait, I sh you should stop. I should stop. No Star Trek. <laughs> what do you mean stop? I sh oh, you want me to just turn off the stream? Like, not stream anymore? Like, we're done for today? Jeremy says, Gamers Grotto says, no Star Trek, and we're done? What, what do other people say? I just got this game. I haven't tried, I haven't actually, I need to, like, get this tape to work. This old work of Stu talks like Shatner the entire time. I just got this game in the mail, but I haven't tried it yet. Clendathu. Here's the tape. It's TRS-80 color computer, and it's based on Starship Troopers, so it has a picture of Robert Heinlein in the back. I I want to I want to play this game, but I, I haven't I I need to actually load it up here. Mark says I'll watch Star Trek for a few minutes before bed, play track, or I'll play track. My orders are as follows: destroy the fifteen Klingon warships which have invaded the galaxy before they can attack Federation headquarters in Stardate two 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 seven. This gives me. Captain James T. Kirk, 27 days. There are five star bases in the galaxy for resupplying my ship. My mission begins with a starship located in the galactic quadrant, Procyon 3. It's star 2200, Christian Green, quadrant 3, comma 3, sector 7, comma 5. I gotta look up what the instructions are. What, what are the uh, what are the commands of this game? Uh, Super Star Trek. Alright, so those text commands. Long range scan. We're doing a long range scan. Mr. Spock, please do long range scan of this quadrant. Shields at 0%. Okay, so there's no Klingons anywhere near me, it looks like. Wait a second. The first number is. It doesn't even say here. The first number is. I think Klingons. The second number is Starbase, if I remember correctly. And the third number is Stars. So there's no Klingons anywhere here. Let's raise the shields. Shield control. Let's hit a thousand units to shields. Deflect your control report. Shields now at one thousand units per your command, Captain. All right, cool. Um, who did that? Was that Scotty? Shields now at one thousand units per your command, sir. I recently read that Shatter says he never watched a single episode of the original series. Shatter is full of crap. I'm sure Shatter's seen some episodes of the original series. Um, I probably in the beginning he didn't, but. Uh, all right, so now what do I do? Where am I going? I'm gonna use. I'm gonna navigate. Set course at warp engine speed. Uh, where the hell am I? What's you? Okay, I gotta get the computer. Come computer. Computer. C computer of gal galactic record. I'm in quadrant three comma three. All right, so that's where I am. So let's fly to uh, six comma three. Three comma six or six comma three. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. I'll go to three comma six. So let's go nav. Course Ugh, doesn't tell me which way is which. So bad. This, these instructions are terrible. Did, did it tell me up above? Was there a choice of taking instructions? No, there were not. Um, I think zero is to the right, if I remember correctly, but I'm not sure. I'm guessing zero is... I'm guessing... Well, it could be completely different for all I know. But uh, <clears throat> I'm guessing it's like zero is to the right, 90 is up, then 270 and 180. But it's completely complete guess. Let's go zero. That should oh zero to nine. 
So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <sighs> that doesn't work, does it? How's it 0 to 9? Let's just do 0. I mean, we know that's pretty straightforward. Lieutenant Sulu records incorrect course data, sir. But you said 0 to 9. Why is it incorrect? Incorrect course data, sir. Mr. Sulu, which way shall I to go? The instructions here are really not helpful. All right, let me, let's see if the other one has better instructions. Hold on. Here's the earlier version of the book. Super Star Trek. This is Hikaru Sudu, played by George Takei. You know, um, when I was a young boy, my parents always told me that I should try to find uh, a suitable man to be with. Where's Super Star Trek? Oh, it's called Space War in this game, I forgot. In this book, they call it Space War for some reason. <sighs> Do you want instructions? Well, it doesn't really say here either. I have to look at the code to figure out how to do it. Captain, we are recording a Romulan vessel entering this quadrant. Um, quadrant nomenclature. Oh, there is instructions here. It's, it's not, it, they don't print it out though. Why didn't they give it here? Uh, Course data, course 1 to 9, it says, but it's so 0 to 9. All right, so 1 is to the right, 2 is... Okay, I don't know why it didn't, it didn't print this out, but all right, let's do this here. Let's do nav, 1 is to the right, and let's go warp factor 3. Oh my gosh, I ran on top of a Klingon. Now, now entering Capella 2 quadrant, sir. Mr. Sulu, target photon torpedoes that Klingon. Ranch target phasers are right on top of him. Uh, let's see. Target photon torpedoes. How do I shoot? What's my controls here? Uh, Tor. Photon torpedo control. Photon torpedo course. Down is seven. Klingon destroyed, sir. Klingon destroyed, Captain. Five torpedoes. All right, command. So, like, we got that, that bastard Klingon. Let's try a long-range center scan. Ooh, to, down and to the left, there's three Klingons in both those spots. So let's go see if we can take out the three Klingons that are down below us. Let's do, let's just, let's see, let's see a short range scan, actually. Let's see, can I just fly down? I, I can't remember in this game if I can do that. I think I, in some of these games, you could fly down, like, and just use impulse drive, but other ones, it crashes the game. Let's try and see what happens. Oh, no, it's, you can't, there's no impulse in this game, just navigation. Course heading down to seven. Warp factor one. Now, what? Showing centers damaged? What kind of crap? How are they damaged? I can't play the game with those short range sensors. Actually, maybe I can. Let me try the library computer. Computer active, wing command. Photon torpedo course data. From Enterprise to Klingon battle cruisers. Direction 5.25. This is... Okay, let's do this. Let's fire torpedoes. We got nine torpedoes left. Fire torpedo course. 5.25. Klingon destroyed. Uh, see, I can do this even without uh, without uh, my uh, my short range sensors. Let's see if they moved. Number two again. They did move. Three, oh, they didn't move. 3.2, exactly where they were before. Let's fire another torpedo. Torpedo, 3.2. Oh, a star at 4 column 4, absorb torpedo energy. That's bullshit. Shields down, library computer damaged by the hit. Warp engines damaged by the hit. I'm getting killed here. Right, I'll shoot the other guy, uh, 2.5. Torpedo, 2.5. Klingon destroyed. 7 unit here Enterprise, sector 2-4. Where, I don't even know where I am. Um, I know there's a star between me and the Klingon. Let me see if I can fire phasers. Phaser control. 
It's like we're on the bridge. <laughs> uh, Phaser's an operative? That's not good. <laughs> Phaser's an operative, warp drive an operative, and uh, what else can I do here? Damage, damage control. Warp engines, short range sensors, long range sensors are fine. Photon tubes are good. Damage control, shield control. Library computer is totally hosed, it looks like. That was 0.35. I guess the warp engines will sh should come the fastest. Um, sector 2, comma 4 is where they're shooting me from. But I can't actually hit sector 2. I can't aim them because there's a star in my way and I can't see where I'm going. Let me tr try to see if I can maneuver a little bit. Oh, the warp engines are down, right? Can I still move an impulse? Let's see. Uh, let's go zero. Oh, I can't do zero. Sorry. Nav one. Warp factor zero to zero point two. Let's go zero point one. Two units in an enterprise. From two comma four. Shields. The problem is I can't aim without the computer. Magnet fire. Oh, phaser is still out, right? Phaser is an operative, sir. What do I do here? What do I do? What do I do? I've got to do something. Where's Mr. Where, uh, inform the Klingons that uh, that we we will uh, surrender. Hail the Klingon ship. What are you talking about? Oh, the captains. I've seen that documentary. The captains. It's not bad. Uh, what can I do here? I'm like so. I got the crap beat out of me. I just I try to like fly around and wait until my my something comes back up. I don't. I can't. And I don't say I can hit him if I don't. I don't even know where I am. Like, what, what, what about, like, I don't know. It's, he's, it says two year hit from two comma four, but I don't know where I am. That's the problem here. Story extensions are out. Phaser's an operative. I guess I'll keep moving. Maybe I can get out, maybe I can get out of dodge here. Nav. Course zero. Oh, sorry. Can't do zero. Course one. Zero point two. Zero unit hit enterprise. Oh, warp engine repair completed. But I don't really want to. I mean, I don't want to leave. I want to kill him. Warp engines are in good shape now. The library computer is completely beaten up. Let's try the long range sensors. Uh. You know what's going to happen in this game? Every time I play this game, I lose. I ran out of time and lose. That's always what happens to me. Uh, I mean, I could like leave and hide, but then I'll get. I'm sure I'll, I'll die. I'll get killed. I'll just like run out of time. That's the problem. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me just. Keep, I'll just keep on waiting. Computer. Sh shields. Shield. Shield control. Let's say a thousand shields. Shield a thousand pre command. Fire phasers. I'm not going to randomly fire photon torpedoes. It just seems like a bad idea. Let's just maneuver a little bit. Navigation. Course. Let's go backwards. Five. Oh, and I have more fire. Okay, let's try point one, though. Library computer repair completed. Long range sensors damaged. See. If it's a zero unit hit, then why am I low range sensor damaged? That's fine. Computer. Give me the give me the direction to this guy. There was number two. Torpedoes. Three point six. Klingon destroyed. Alright, good. Now my low range sensors are out, but I can still fly to where those other Klingons were if I want to get my ass kicked. Let's try that. Uh, let's go up into the left. Four. So let's go navigation, course four, or factor one. Warp engine shot down. It says five comma five. You have bad navigation. Short range sensors are out. And low range sensors are out too, right? There's probably like a star in my way. Oh my god. All right. Nav, course. Let's go up a little bit. Three. Or factor point one. Nav four or factor one. Alright, all my short range centers came back up. Now we're to Capella One Quadrant. Short range center repair completed. Long range center state repair improved. Now we're Capella One Quadrant. Combat air, condition red. Okay, I got five photon torpedoes. 
Click on Dreaming 11. That's not good. Um, I guess let's... Is my computer still, is, we're still working? I guess let's waste some photon torpedoes. Two. All right, let's fire torpedoes. Uh, torp. Let's get that guy on the left. Let's, I don't know which one it is. Direction, distance. Let's get the, the furthest guy away. 5.666. Klingon destroyed. 180 unit enterprise. Damage control report. Shield control damaged. That's great. Let's shoot again. Set uh, Torpedoes. Course. 7... Let's hit the 7 comma point three three three. Click on destroyed. 55 unit hit. Photon tubes damaged by the hit. Oh no. Torpedoes. Photons not operational. Phasers. Phasers locked on target. No use to fire. 500. 15 unit hit? That's it? Oh my god. Why? Oh, because... Because he's supposed to, his shields were good, I'm guessing. I still have short range sensors. Alright, let's fire phasers again. 500 again. So I have 300. 171 unit hit. Klingon destroyed. Wow. I guess the first time was his shield. What do you guys think so far here? Alright, so Klingons are rating 8. Long range sensors are working again. Okay, let's see if I get to that star base and, and dock. And I think you can just, I think you can dock by the star bases and get get replenished. Let's try that. Zero one eight to left to up and to the left is supposed to be a star base. Let's, oh, my warp engines are down. Right, let's say course four warp factor one. All right, there is a star base right there. Uh, let's try to dock. Nav course. Seven warp factor point three. No, one more shield control damage. Now, of course, seven point one shields drop for docking purposes. All right, good. So, I got my four torpedoes replenished. Shield zero starting is two two oh five. What was the date they gave me to finish this by? I scroll back up and see. It started at 2200 and I had till 2227. So already a bunch of time is gone. But I might actually be able to win this game. We'll see. That was a pretty good use of my uh, of my um, my controls, even though everything was damaged the whole time. Mark says I'm off to bed. Thanks for streaming. Good night. Good night, Mark. It's is it, it's I guess it's sort of late. Um, we're, we're winding down here. I think this is gonna be the last game for today. Let's see, let's see if I can beat these Klingons. Let's do a uh, long range scan. So to the up and to the left, there's one Klingon. Let's go take that guy out. If I can. Nav four or factor one. Shields dangerously low. Oh, I forgot to raise the shields. Shield control. Shield control inoperable? Oh no, I gotta get out of here. Uh, shields are at zero. Nav. I'm mean, not wasting time. This is stupid. Well, you know what? Screw that. Uh, can, I, can I get out of here? I made a mistake. Okay, good. Incorrect course data, sir. Let's try to shoot this guy. Computer 2, 3.6. Let's do torpedoes. 3.6. Click on destroyed. All right, I managed to survive, even though my shields... I know shields. Shield control is still... Negative 2.75. Low range scans. Alright, so I'm at the galactic boundary here, it looks like. Let's use my computer and get the the full galactic record. Zero. This is where I've been so far. Um, most of these Klingons have been killed, but not everywhere. Where am I right now? I'm at 1, 3, so I'm over here. All right, let's fly down to this uh, six comma three. So let's fly straight down. That's uh, seven. So nav 
course, seven. Warp factor, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Library computer damage. This is what I like about this game. Stuff gets damaged randomly. Like I didn't I didn't nobody nobody attacked me, so why would my computer be damaged? That's bullshit. Excuse me. There's a click on above me. Can I raise my shields now? Shield control still inoperable. Alright, let's see if I can fight that one click on above me. Nav, let's go up. Or factor one. I'm going to get killed because I can't use my computer. Let's fire phasers at him. Computer failure hampers accuracy. Great. 1,000. <laughs> 117 unit. 64 hit, hit on Enterprise. So I guess the fact that I had no shields means that I just died right away. So the Enterprise has been destroyed. The Federation will be conquered. All right. Well, that sort of sucked. I mean... This game is not. I mean, this 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 version of the game is not good because it shouldn't be a situation where you can just randomly suffer damage for no reason. So, bottom line is, I was destroyed, and uh, I guess that's it for for tonight. Probably, we were doing basic computer games. Here's the two books. I think of all the games in the book the, that we played so far, because there's actually a couple of this one we didn't play. But of all ones we played, I think hockey was the best one, the one we played last time. So I think most of the ones today were, were sort of eh. I apologize for that. They can't all be winners. But uh, we will keep on soldiering on to find good old games, and uh, hopefully we'll get a few better ones coming up soon. These are more like for historical purposes than anything else. So thanks, guys, for watching. Thanks, everyone who's here. Scott, Jeremy, Chris, Mark, Ryan, Hopster Key made an appearance. And a few other people here. I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm, I think I'm getting tired also. It's pretty late. Thanks, guys. Hit like if you haven't done that and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I promise next time we'll have some better games. Tomorrow I'm going to continue streaming that game Absent, that freeware adventure game that I started. I already did two parts of it. I think we're pretty close to the end. So tomorrow the plan is to finish that off. And uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll do something else. And hopefully next week I'll publish a couple of uploaded videos, so not, not just streams. Thank you, Scott. And have a good night. Thank you, Jeremy. Have a good night. And uh, we'll do this again real soon. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you all later. Peace out.